So I'll be talking to you about how to deliver effective feedback. I think all of you must be realizing that uh, providing feedback to trainees is an important component in uh, the whole education process and plays an important role as far as learning is concerned. I do not have any financial disclosures. During this talk, I'll be covering following topics. How to define feedback? What are the objectives of feedback? What are the characteristic features of good quality feedback? And how can you deliver effective feedback? Let us begin with some of the questions. Whenever we are providing feedback, what is the main objective of giving feedback? And you have following options. Option one, to point out the strengths. Option B, to point out deficiencies and area of improvement. Point C, bring about change in the behavior or performance. And D, both A as well as B. We'll be seeing responses, Eduardo. Eduardo, I think you're you're muted. Yeah. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. <clears throat> yes, the box. Um, I can see the box. If you don't see it, I will let you know. Until now, we have some answers entered, and they stopped entering. So I will. And the poll and share the results. Uh, the results are showing now on the participants' uh, PCs. If you don't see them, I can tell you that uh, the most answer, the most chosen question was uh, both A and B. So uh, I think uh, while all of majority have chosen both A and B, um, you will realize that we neither want to just point out the strength nor we want to point out deficiencies. But ultimate goal of a feedback is to bring about change in the behavior or performance. And therefore, the feedback should not end by just providing them the areas of improvement or the areas of their strength, but also should talk about of the strategies or the specific behavior change that we are expecting from, uh, from, from providing feedback. The next question is, which is the correct sequence of sandwich technique of feedback? And I'm sure you must be familiar with the sandwich technique. If not, then I'll be talking to you about sandwich technique in my presentation. And your choices are the sequence or the option A, criticism, followed by suggestion, followed by compliment. Option B, compliment, followed by criticism, followed by compliment. Option C, compliment, followed by criticism, followed by compliment, and then ending with the suggestion or area, uh, how do they can bring change in the behavior. And option D, all of the above. Still some answers coming in. <clears throat> Okay, I will end the poll, share results. So the most chosen answer 
were compliment, criticism, criticism, compliment, and suggestion. Great. I think that's the correct answer. Um, our feedback should start by talking to them about things that they are doing correct, um, followed by which is the area of improvement that we are expecting. And then uh, this should be followed by uh, complimenting them or reiterating what they are doing good. But it is important that we also discuss with our learner uh, uh, how they can bring the improvement in the area that we identified as a scope of improvement. Let us go to the next question and see. The third question is, which of the following is not the characteristics of effective feedback? And your options are timely. Option B, combination of positive and negative. Option C, incorporate learner's perspective. And option D, focused on person. And your time starts now. Okay, <clears throat> answers are coming in. Okay, so the most chosen answer is focused on person. And you are right that the feedback should not be directed at the person. It is directed at the behavior that we are trying to bring improvement at. So now let us see what is feedback. And I'm sure that all of you must be aware of these scales that are on our cars or motorbikes. Now, what is the purpose of these scales being displayed there? The purpose of these scales is to give you feedback about a specific aspect. The first one gives you the speed that you are driving the vehicle. And the second screen gives you the quantum of the fuel that you have in the car. How we use this feedback? If you are going or driving through a zone where the speed limit is set to 40, you will look at the screen and immediately try to reduce acceleration. Similarly, if the fuel gauge shows you the bar closer to the red mark, you will definitely try to find the next fuel station and get your car or vehicle fueled back. What it shows is that you are using these scales or the feedback in order to bring change or bring necessary action so that you can continue to achieve your goal or the target. So by definition, feedback is a process in which effect or output of an action is returned, fed back to modify the next action. In the example that I gave you, the gauge on the fuel and the speed gauge were giving you a feedback and making you aware of what action you need to take if you have to, to reach to your destination. In terms of when we talk with the learner um, or in the uh, with our students, the feedback is the information 
which we provide to a learner about his or her prior behavior so that the learner may modify his or her current and future behavior to achieve the desired results. Now here, it is important for you to realize that feedback comprises of three important components. We are providing information based on certain observations. And then that feedback we are asking or expecting learner to bring certain changes or modifications so that they can achieve their desired results. So it should basically comprise of these three components. Providing specific information based on the info, based on the observations, and then also suggesting modifications. In principle, feedback provides understanding to receiver exactly what he or she did. And in that conversation, you are talking about a specific situation or behavior. You should also talk about what impact that it had on the situation, either on you, other colleagues, or peers, or the specific activity that this behavior impacted. And then it should talk about what corrective actions are to be taken. Now, how feedback helps? The feedback, if provided appropriately, helps receiver change poor habits. It also helps keep the desirable behaviors and help learner modify and improve performance. And therefore, the response for the second question was a uh, first question was that it should result in improvement in overall behavior. What are the qualities of good feedback? Let us discuss these different qualities. The first quality is the feedback must be provided in a timely manner. It should be delivered as close to incidents as possible and it should be delivered as often as possible. We should not wait for the end of term uh, to give feedback. And it is very important that if you deliver it in a timely manner, both the person providing feedback and the receiver will be able to recall exactly the incidence or the behavior and will be able to relate what improvement or what did they wrong did what they did wrong or right and how they have to modify their behavior the second important quality of feedback is where to provide feedback. You can give positive feedback immediately and in public. And that helps uh, uh, raise the morale of the receiver. They feel very good. And this act as a reinforcement for them to continue those good practices. However, if you have to give a negative feedback, it must be provided in private, in your office or in a place where the, the receiver can feel secure. It is extremely dangerous to provide negative feedback in public. 
it demotivates receiver and may distract them from bringing improvement in their behavior. So it is very critical that if we are giving negative feedback, that we choose an appropriate place where the receiver can feel secure and safe. The third important aspect that one has to keep in mind is the temperament. Whenever we are giving feedback, our temperament should be pleasing, it should be comforting to the receive, uh, receiver, and we should not use any words or language which sounds judgmental. If we are angry, it is important that we should cool down first before inviting receiver for the feedback. And this is very important because it is, it is crucial that the receiver is open to suggestion and does not feel insulted or humiliated. We talked about feedback sandwich. Our conversation must begin with complimenting the receiver for things they are doing right. And then put in or sandwich criticism, the areas that one need to bring improvement in. And we should end conversation by complimenting them once again on the behaviors that they should continue to practice or strengthen. The fifth quality for good feedback is be specific. Any behavior or anything that we are talking about should be precise and accompanied by specific examples. And we'll be talking about some such examples which will highlight this point. So therefore, whenever we are providing feedback, we should keep the objective in mind. We want to convey the areas where your recipient or receiver need to bring improvement. And you are using sandwich technique to keep them motivated at the same time, highlighting the area that they need to improve. And finally, for them to achieve the goals that they want to achieve. The sixth quality of a good feedback is use of right language. It is important that while providing feedback, we should be respectful for the to the recipient. We are making suggestions for improvement. And therefore, the language which suggests the area of improvement rather than pointing weakness is important. Whatever suggestion that we are making while giving feedback, we should also talk about what actions the receiver can take in order to bring the desired outcome or improvement. So they should be actionable. One of the strategies that one can use in order to make receiver comfortable and also make part of this whole discussion is to use this feedback matrix which comprises of tell, ask, tell and then ask and ask then tell. So it is important that at the end you should ask what the receiver 
has understood from the feedback and also you should allow them to bring or to to make the explanation that they want to make it should be a participatory activity at the end of the feedback the receiver should understand why he or she should consider the input and should also be in agreement that yes, these are the areas which require improvement and these are the areas which are his or her strength and they should be continued. So to summarize, the feedback has a goal, goal of bringing improvement. And therefore, using a right technique of providing feedback, we can constantly guide our learners to achieve their goal and become a lifelong learner as well as being successful in their career or educational pursuits. Let us watch this video. Today, we're going to talk about giving feedback in the clinical setting. First, a quick poll. How many of you think feedback is an important part of your job? How many of you look forward to giving feedback? Hmm, what's the big deal? Just sit your learner down, tell them something positive, then slide in something negative, and then top it all off with something positive. Isn't that how it's done? Ah, the classic feedback sandwich. Healthy, nutritious, delicious. Maybe not so much. Maybe there's a tastier feedback sandwich out there. But before we can find it, we'll have to answer a very important question. What is feedback? Come on, it's not rocket science. Well, Actually, it is. Consider this. Here's a rocket that's programmed to hit a target. Blast off. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. So what do we tell mission control? Well, we want the rocket to stay at the same elevation and travel farther. So in other words, we want to reinforce some behaviors and correct others. Let's blast off again. Bullseye. Now, we don't have rockets. We have learners, and we want them to hit a whole bunch of targets. We need to watch them and make note of what needs correction and what needs reinforcement. But hold on. How do we get that feedback into their systems? Hey, maybe now's a perfect time for that new taste of your sandwich. First, ask your learner to think about how they're doing. That engages them and gets a conversation going. It gives you a chance to see if their ideas about how they're doing match up with your impressions. And that gives you a chance to learn about their intentions. No mind reading necessary. Next, tell your learner what you saw. Show that you've heard what they've said and give feedback based on what you saw firsthand. Use non-judgmental words to describe specific behaviors that can be corrected or reinforced. Regulate the quantity, not too much. Last, ask if you got it right. Check to see if your feedback makes sense to your learner. Ask if there are other ways that you can help them to reach their goals. Wrap it all up with a commitment for the future. That's the ask, tell, ask feedback. Sandwich. Try it. You might find that giving feedback isn't as hard as you think. Now, who's hungry? <laughs> Good. 
So let us look at some of the examples of uh, good or bad feedbacks. Uh, yesterday, you forgot to write pre-operative notes. What will be your thought? I'm sure this is a good feedback because it is using a very specific example. You are unreliable. And I think many of you or many of us when angry, if the pre-operative notes are not written, end up telling this word. But that demotivates and it is not fulfilling the qualities of good feedback. It is important that we also talk about the impact this behavior has made. Therefore, your second sentence should be, the lack of pre-operative notes caused confusion and delays in operating room. Rather than saying them, it demonstrates lack of responsibility. When you say it demonstrates lack of responsibility, you are becoming judgmental, you are pointing or you are becoming personal. This will allow receiver to better understand why he or she should change. You should also try to understand the reason behind the behavior and therefore allow the receiver to explain why they or he or she did not write pre-operative notes. Any specific reason you did not write the pre-operative notes rather than you have no business of not writing notes. Again here, we are using or becoming judgmental. And if this feedback is combined with suggestion that will complete the feedback cycle. You can say, from next time, if you are busy, text me in advance so that I am prepared. Rather than, I should not have expected you to write pre-operative notes. So I'm sure that in this example of where the learner forgot to write pre-operative notes and you had to give feedback, we were able to demonstrate all the good qualities of feedback. Let us take another example. Your decision to choose anterior chamber intraocular lens over posterior chamber intraocular lens was correct. Rather than saying, you are doing very well. If you say you are doing very well, the learner may not be able to relate what I am doing well. But if you use those specific behaviors that made you think that the learner has done well, then use those specific instances to start the feedback. And then couple it with, I am happy you have good understanding of choosing IOLs in different situations. Rather than saying, I am happy with your choice of IOL. Because this will give them idea that under what situation they have to choose anterior chamber intraocular lens over posterior chamber intraocular lenses. Let us watch this video and then see whether this is a good feedback or not so good. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm curious, and I know we meet once in a while and talk about how things are going, I'm curious how you feel like it would 
I think I'm doing great. I'm like 99 percent on the board. And I think you are there's no question you're the highest sort of really already on those success that you're taking. Um and I, and I think that's you're doing very well. Whatever however you're studying is working. Uh any anything else? Any problems or well, you know, sometimes I don't think I get as much out of the lectures as I could be. So I stop going. Well, we talk about that in the very beginning of the uh, uh, year about punctuality and about what our expectation. And although you're right, you do very well on the uh, on the test, it's set the real bad again. And I think some of the other residents look up to you uh, and they may not know how well you're doing and how well they're doing. And you need to go on and do So from a professionalism standpoint, um, I, I think it's important that we, we try to fix this problem. And I, I do have. Uh, we take attendance. We do even sort of have the professors know if your people are late. And I can tell you that um, you could miss, as you just said, you missed five letters in the last month and been late five more. And that's, uh, I think, our next closest resident has been late to one lecture and has missed none. So you're clearly not, you're an outlier as far as that goes. Um, I didn't realize that you took attendance or you noticed I wasn't there. I thought I just had to be a store on attendance. Well, part of, part of being a resident and being in the program is to, is to go to life and set a good example. Um, so I think what, we, what we'd like to do is try to have you attend lectures. Uh, and I know you may not think you're getting a lot out of it, but uh, and I know you're doing well, but I think attending lectures is part of being a resident in this program and being on time is important. So we're, of course, going to continue to monitor that. And hopefully, uh, when we meet again in a month or so, we'll be able to have a, a different conversation. I, I really think that um, uh, if uh, we can fix this, if you, you know, you could be one of our very best residents. I definitely want to be the best resident. Okay, well, we'll plan on meeting in another month or so. We'll see how things go and we'll monitor things and take it from there. I promise you I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Now compare Thanks this to the next. Hey, Dr. Lee, how are you doing? Good. Listen, uh, I've, I've been hearing some problems with incurring. Uh, problems? Yeah. Uh, well, I've heard from at least a couple of people that you're not showing up and lazy. Lazy? I have a lot of things, Dr. Bowman. Well, They're not lazy. Well, I've heard that, the, that you've been late to conferences on some occasions, and I didn't miss you. I don't need those conferences. I can study at home. Yeah, well, I'm you study on the board. I know you're doing very well on the board, and you're doing well on the test, but we talked about uh, punctuality and professionalism in the past, and I just needed this. I just don't get anything out of those lectures. So. Well, we need a face. We need you get a whole time to lecture the ball. Nevertheless, I need a face. So do your best, and I expect it to be fixed. No more guardians. No more lectures. Well, you say it, those things, right? So. <laughs> Good. so, I think you must have realized that there are these are two different. Uh, case examples of giving feedback. And if you notice, uh, in the first instance, Dr. Carl Golnick, who recorded this video, made Professor Lee sit comfortably, who is learner in this example, and started that he is doing very well as far as his exam or performance in the examinations is concerned. And he is overall happy with the performance. And then brought out the issue that was, uh, which required improvement. And that was that he was missing classes. He was not attending classes. And then he explained why it is important to attend classes and not just being excellent in the examinations. And finally, he complimented once again about the good behavior or the overall performance. And you could see that the whole conversation was very, very comfortable and it motivated uh, the candidate to bring about the change. On the other hand, in the second video, you saw that the feedback was provided while standing. 
it started with pointing out or bringing the the behavior that required change without talking about what the candidate or the receiver is doing good and therefore there was conversation which ended up by saying bring about the change i just want that i am sure that if you give or use the second example and you are a receiver you will feel very demotivated and may not bring any change in your behavior so it is very important for us to follow all the important components of feedback if we have to bring about change in the behavior of our learners or recipient so to summarize feedback plays a crucial role in learning process but it will be valuable only if it is given appropriately a poor feedback can bring disappointment and may not bring the desired change with that i'll like to end my talk and will like to thank all of you for patient listening and ophthalmology foundation for giving me this opportunity to share with you thank you very much